do you see those happy smiling faces gathered round the bank? Hi folks, Chris Anderson with Mount Comfort RV. Today we're going to take a look at a 2019 Newmar New Air. This is a 3343 model, very popular floor plan with them. This coach just arrived and, and New Airs were excited about this because New Airs are hard to get. Newmar only builds so many of these and they've been a real good seller for us when we can get them. So it's here. If you want it, call me. Um, so don't forget to like and subscribe to our page first and foremost and any questions at all don't forget to call in and ask for me um, if you come in to see this please don't forget the ask for me part that's kind of why we do this we want to be educational and give you all the information but also at the end of the day I need to sell some coaches so there you go let's uh, let's get right to it as I said this is the 3343 model so what you're looking at here is you have a full wall slide on this half of the coach so that slide starts right here and goes all the way to the back wall in the bedroom there's also a bed slide the bedroom uh, the bed itself slides out and then you have the sofa slide here you have a nice long sofa now this particular coach has a 360 horsepower engine in it. Um, I know that uh, some people, I, I, I keep getting the question, is it underpowered? I don't know where that internet rumor started. I will tell you, I took one of these to Texas and it absolutely is not underpowered. I have customers that have stepped down from five and 600 horsepower engines that are out in these using them right now and say it's absolutely adequate for what it is. I mean, it's not gonna win any races, uh, but you're gonna be able to comfortably run 70 miles an hour down the road and you know, 50 plus up the, up the big mountains and, and that's really what you're looking for in a motorhome anyway. Uh, if you have questions on that, you want some testimonials on that from actual customers that own these instead of some engineer that thinks he knows everything about RVs on online, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, uh, reach out and I can, I can make that happen for you. So this particular coach, we have this done in the Bermuda Glaze Maple Cabinetry. This is the high gloss. Newmar gives us the choice of, of gloss or high or matte finish or high gloss. These are the, uh, the high, high gloss. This is the moonbeam decor with the shadow graphics on the outside for those of you keeping score at home. All right, let's start. I want to start up front here. We have a little bit of storage on either side over here. Just nice little cubbies. Those are carpeted and lined. Notice with all the Newmar doors, they stand up on their own. They have a nice strut that holds them up there. You're not holding it up with one hand and uh, um, trying, to, uh, trying to load things with the other. Hidden hinges, you don't see the hinges around here. I'm gonna step past you. Up in this cabinet, okay, this is prepped for um, anything you would want to put in here. Audio-visual, you could, although there's another cabinet for that as well, but this is vented at the back, so anything that might uh, uh, need to stay cool, this is a good cabinet to have that in. Here's the main controls um, for a lot of items in the coach, other than the silver leaf system, um, which we'll get to in a little bit. These are some of your basic controls for um, window awnings, privacy drapes, satellite dish, antenna, your slide out in and out is on here as well, that type of thing, and your security lights. Also a little data port they can plug the computer into if we need to, um, to talk to, to the coach. These are your Gerard awning controls up top there. And it also comes with a remote, which most people prefer. Good storage here, this is shelved. So above and below. And then we're gonna go right over here. More storage up top. Now in the driver's compartment, let's uh, take a seat here. You'll notice, uh, of course, when this was introduced in 2018, we were really excited because it was the first one with the all digital dash and the push button start. And of course, those, th those things still ring true. Just like that, that's how hard it is to start this coach. Now it'll probably be beeping at me because I'm plugged in and that type of thing, but that's okay and our air's a little low, so get lots of beeps and everything as we go through here. But I wanted to get a good picture of the digital dash, so I'll let Tony zoom in on that. We're not gonna run it for too long, apparently, Tony. We're about out of fuel. We're gonna go get some fuel and put that on Tony's credit card. Okay, my camera control system over here, I love this gonna to go to camera control we're gonna hit the 360 so now I can see this is what's behind me there's our Mount Comfort RV pond and then here's my 360 view of everything that's around me you can control any of the individual cameras here if I want to see even though my blinds down 
If I want to see what's out front, I just hit that. That's what's in front of us. If I was really brave, I'd take this for a, a little spin uh, with the front blind down, but that's really hard to explain to the owner when that goes bad. Um, if I want to see what's out either side, you can kind of use this as a security camera as well. I can even turn on my turn signal cameras and, and, and check that out. So great for security use. And then when you're, you're on your backup camera, you kind of have three different perspectives on there. Um, where you can kind of be either really close to what's up front like that or kind of see more of a an off in the distance view I like the off in the distance view a little better Especially when I'm going down the road because I'd be able to see my toad behind me there and then still see beyond that as well So that's a little bit about the uh, um, Camera system the steering the smart wheels a little different when we went to the digital gauges on there this these controls here Which typically on a smart wheel do your wiper blades these actually control they're kind of like the computer mouse if you will uh, they move the cruise controls uh, is over here on the the turn signal stock um, and I can scroll through different items here um, and control that what type of cruise control I want because this does have um, the adaptive cruise and, and and all that stuff in here you can control that with this right here with an up and down and then an OK button and a back button and a home button so like I said it's kind of a um, think of it as like the computer mouse is right here with your thumb. Not something you necessarily want to do a whole lot of, uh, of tinkering with when you're going down the road, but certainly something um, that uh, uh, while you're stopped you could change some settings on. Um, your wiper control has now been moved over here, cruise controls over here. Your um, tilt wheel is done with the left foot. Everybody's always looking for it over here and can't find it. Um, so that's uh, uh, done with your left foot and it is tilt and telescoping as well. And I like it because unlike you know some of those when they have the the, the bar on the side of the stock there it's it's really like five different positions you can put it in and maybe one's a little too high and one's a little too low this wherever i take my foot off that's where the steering wheel stays and when you're done you go to get out of the seat i like just hitting it that opens it up makes it up, makes it for easy uh exit down here is going to be hard to see but it is the comfort drive control if you're not familiar with comfort drive simply put it's like power steering for power steering it takes all of the effort out of driving this coach it takes the crown roads where normally you know anybody's driven a motorhome much there's been times when you're trying to go down the road and you've got such a crosswind or a cross in, or, or a crown in the road that you're you're doing this to go straight down the road that's uncomfortable and that wears on you over time um, it's a lot of stress it's a lot, you, you don't really even really realize it but it's a lot of stress in your shoulders and everything much different than just being relaxed with the comfort drive it senses that it corrects for it all of a sudden your steering wheel is just back to 10 and 2 you're very comfortable and I always tell people with you know some coaches you drive by kind of chasing them all over the road uh, with the conditions that are out there um, with Numar and the comfort drive this is this is how I drive it's a thumb and two fingers with my arm comfortably on the armrest that's what comfort drive is all about we did a separate video on that as well Tony will link that to our video on our on our uh, web page if you're watching this on YouTube you'll see other videos that relate to this coach if you go to um, our web page at www.mountcomfortrv.com look up this coach which Tony's going to put the stock number right on the screen right now he's good like that and uh, look up that stock number and you'll be able to see other videos that relate to this including comfort drive and that type of thing so can other some other controls up here up top this is my parking brake um, these are air brakes this is a full air ride air brake system diesel pushers don't have park you know you've got your transmission control over here it's reverse neutral and drive that's those are your three choices um, there's no park like on a car so um, when this handle is pulled the brakes are set, this coach is going nowhere. That's the long and short of that. We have heated power mirrors, of course. Those are controlled right here. We step down, we have our, our battery boost um, button here. The battery boost just combines your batteries. You have two sets of batteries. You have eight house batteries on this coach and two chassis batteries. If you run either set of them dead, you can make things happen by pressing in on this button. It'll combine all the batteries, and then you can start your engine, start your generator, that type of thing. Headlight controls. Uh, your, your dimmer switch um, for lighting, um, your dome light, which is right above my head. All of that is controlled over here to the driver's left. I have two cup holders and a little USB port right here. 
I mentioned my transmission controls are over here. One thing this coach does have is a power window, power driver's window for paying tolls and such. Um, you'd be stunned, most diesel pushers do not have power windows. So that's a nice power window here. Our engine brake control is right here. And my traction control switch is here as well. All very easily accessed while you're driving. And then fully automatic HWH leveling jacks are controlled right back here. Center console, um, we've talked about the cameras and, and the radio control and nav is all built into these two screens. Then controls for my pedals, because they are adjustable pedals. My visors that can be controlled while you're going down the road heading into the sun. Um, my overhead fans uh, control, you can turn them off and on here. And then high, medium, and low is right here. Docking lights are nice. They're back by the back wheels, and that's nice when you're, you're backing into that camping spot so you don't get a little too close to the uh, um, picnic table. Without docking lights, uh, you're kind of going in blind sometimes. Now, the 360 camera helps during the day, but at night, um, the docking lights are something you'd really appreciate. It's a lot better than meeting uh, Jeff in my body shop. Um, you don't want to meet him. He's a very nice guy, but you, you understand what I'm saying. Um, my, my front fan control here, that controls, there's a, there's a uh, underneath this, these drawers here, hidden back in there, there's a heat exchanger. And that heat exchanger is tied to the Oasis system, which is our primary heating of this coach. So if I wanted some heat up here that wasn't coming from the standard dash controls here, I can turn that on and actually get heating from the Oasis system and kind of control that high, medium, and low. I have generator start, I can lock my doors control my air horn just turn it off and on um, you either have a regular horn like that or you have either one just with a flip of a switch there uh, my courtesy lights uh, those are my aisle lights we'll talk about those in a bit and and a visor as well so all of those are controlled they're pretty standard HVAC controls for dash that's just like most autom automobiles you have your your heating and cooling there and then two nice little drawers as well both the driver and passenger seat are power and they have recliners built into them they do rotate around now if you if you're buying a 43 foot motorhome you probably um, don't spin the chairs around that often if you're buying a 33 foot motorhome which is what the new air is 33 feet 8 inches if memory serves uh, that you'll use these chairs in your living compartment just a little bit more uh, one other thing while we're up here tony let's get a shot down in the step well there is a step cover here um, so with the press of a button I'm gonna have to lean past you, I apologize. Let me sit in the seat, that'll be the best way to get this. The passenger has all the control here. A little squeaky. Um, I think we might need to lubricate something on that, but it's working fine. And you can stand on this, it's, it's very strong. And that's the same Corian that's used throughout the rest of the coach. When you drop this coach in gear um, and, and release the parking brake, the doors and all of your compartment doors lock automatically. That's a wonderful feature. Um, that's uh, obviously for safety purposes, that's, that's nice. Um, also just convenience of, you don't have to wonder, did you lock your compartment doors? They all locked, so that, that's uh, wonderful. We have, a, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a nice large hide -a bed here. This is a hide -a bed with a built-in air mattress in it. The two ottomans are actually storage ottomans. Okay. These are, this is all flex steel furniture, by the way. Driver, passenger seats, the ottomans, the, the sofa, it's all flex steel. Now, this particular coach um, came with the Euro booth. Okay, the Euro booth is also flex steel. Um, this does not make a bed. Uh, it's an option, you can do the comfort booth, which does give you a bed. This is a little more comfortable. Sometimes people like this a little better. We're always trying to guess what the next customer through the door is gonna like, so uh, that's, that's the tricky part. Now I'm gonna take, for our television purposes, there it comes. We have a beautiful televator. This is directly across from the sofa. Your, your viewing angles are straight on. And even if you were eating here, you'd be a little close, but it's very usable um, to sit right here and, and have great viewing angles. So uh, up, to, up to five or six people could have good viewing angles between the driver passenger seats, the three-person sofa, the two at the, at, the, at the booth dinette. You have a lot of options there. Um, they do have the Bose system in here. 
nice sound bar built in that's that's just a nice improvement from the way we used to do it with the surround sound nothing wrong with that but that's a lot more wires to run the bose system sounds just as good if not better and that is bluetooth capable so you can sync your phone to that so let's start going through some of these cabinets now this is the header of the slide room here people wonder why numar didn't give you the full cabinet space well that's there's a header that has to be there <laughs> so let me pass under you here this is our um AV cabinet that is a Blu-ray player in there and this is this coach does have an in-motion satellite dish on it and it's all pre-wired so you could just sl slide a satellite receiver in there the satellite dish that's on this is in motion and can be tuned to direct TV or dish network either one questions on that don't hesitate to call me on electronics of course we have multiplex lighting throughout this coach which means those little blue switches there that are going to control our lights and or our shades you can I walk in the front door I hit two buttons it lights up the entire coach so you're not walking into a a dark coach at night nice uh nice peace of mind when you when you do that there is storage underneath the booth there's a drawer on each one of these now our we have a beautiful tile floor here this is a uh, um, very dramatic on the tile floor this is also a heated tile floor we paid for the uh the heated option Heated floors, people love them. Now it's an expensive option, it's like 6,500 bucks, somewhere in that neighborhood, but, but uh, most people find it well worth it at the end of the day. If it's cool outside like it is today, it's like 50 degrees outside right now, you can actually use the, the heated tile floor to heat the coach, and it's silent heat. I mean, the Oasis system is pretty darn quiet. The heat pumps in a Numar are reasonably quiet. The, the, the heated floor is dead silent. And let's face it, it's nice getting up in the morning and having a warm floor to put your, put your feet on. I'm gonna go to some cabinets over here and take a look at these. Again, these are all lined, carpeted, so the stuff that's in there isn't rattling around. Let's see if I can reach one more. And Tony with an assist over there, perfect. That little brown box is actually the pump that inflates the air mattress that's built into the sofa. Okay. Now this coach does have the day and night version of the MCD type shades. This is the complete blackout here for complete privacy, but the windows do each have this as well, which you can kind of see through um, on, on that, that webbed material there. It's a little hard today, but um, that is kind of see-through. You can kind of still see what's going on, but at night you drop down the privacy shade. Over here, these are adjustable shelves. These are lined right above the fireplace. I would probably use this for pantry, but I do have a, a, a we're running a special right now. If you buy this coach, you can use those for whatever you want. Nice little cubby down there. Numar finds all the little cubbies to give you. And people chuckle at those, and boy, what good is that? But I guarantee you, you get a serious RVer, you, they come back in a year, they'll have something in there. They'll find something that that's the perfect little spot to put it in. All right, so let's open up some cabinetry. We have a spot for a dishwasher. We're gonna do our lower cabinets first, then our uppers. Little cubby here for uh, all your sink stuff. Good storage there, and that, that little area down there is actually where you put these Corian tops when you're when you're not when they're not in use all right we have four drawers they're all full extension ball bearing drawer glides and these are the soft clothes as well so when you get close they'll pull themselves the rest of the way in okay. look at this don't have that rubber made tray you have the beautiful wood dividers built into this again that's on a soft touch and then we have a dishwasher. Now we'll step up to our sink here. The pink stuff you see is RV antifreeze. We are in the Midwest. Uh, we're not just sloppy Kool-Aid drinkers. That's what people think sometimes. That's actually a necessity in the winter months around here. So one big stainless sink, and it's, that's deep enough to get a big pots and pans in. Of course, that's a pull-out sink sprayer, as you would expect. And then an undermount induction cooktop two burner, and this is removable. So if you wanted to take the induction cooktop and plug it in outside and cook on the picnic table, knock yourself out. All right, let's cover some upper cabinetries in the kitchen. Again, all lined. And nice shelf in the middle, nice divider there. 30 inch residential microwave convection oven. 
and that's a Whirlpool. And then topping off the kitchen with a Samsung LED lit full-size residential fridge. Take a look at the pantry. These are adjustable shelves. So you can do taller items or shorter items. These pull out because what you, you know, invariably want is always at the back. I don't know how, why it works that way in life, but it does, and we all know it. So, all right, let's take a look at the bathroom. All right, smaller coach, obviously, again, 33 feet, eight inches long. The new air is designed for, um, there's, there's actually two demographics we've found for this coach. Uh, the, the first demographic we knew existed were these people that have owned Dutch Stars and Mountaineers and, and you know, maybe American Coach or high-end Monaco's and, and they've had these four, five, six hundred thousand dollar coaches or more for years, but they get to a certain point where they don't want to be 40, 45 feet long anymore. They want to scale it back a little. They want the, but, but they don't want to give up the trim level. And, and the problem with most short coaches, and by most I mean this really doesn't have a competitor in the marketplace, the problem is that when when manufacturers go smaller so many times they go cheap and, and it's it's cheap furniture it's cheap flooring it's cheap amenities and people don't want that if they've had these four or five six hundred thousand dollar coaches they, they they still want to maintain this so that we call those the downsizers that's certainly a demographic that's available or that, that this is targeted at and, and that we've been selling to the surprise demographic to me is people that have never owned a motorhome before I've sold several of these to people that have never owned one before. This is their first bite at it, but they've not wanted to take such a big bite out of the apple. They don't want a 40, 45 footer drive around. Maybe they're a little intimidated by that. Maybe they just don't want that big of a coach. Whatever the reason, doesn't matter to us. There are people that are stepping into the new air as their first coach. Uh, I, I always tell them, well, pack a lunch on your, on your day that uh, we're gonna do your walkthrough because there's a lot to learn when you start with this much coach, but doesn't matter. We'll get you through it and, and, and uh, you'll love it. So good size shower in here, uh, getting back to the bathroom itself. We have the drop down seat, okay? Um, plenty of room in here. Uh, you know, I, again, I'm, I go out 5'9", five, 5'10", five, about 220-ish. Uh, and nice grab handle here as well. I fit in here fine. You have the rain sensor up top here. You also have the little uh, energy miser that's it's lit up this year that's a nice feature there's a light switch for it um, and, and what that does is that allows you to turn the hot water on without it actually coming out of the faucet <laughs> Okay, and uh, when it's not coming out of the faucet, it's actually recirculating back into the fresh tank and it's getting hot. So when you do finally turn it on, you didn't waste a drop of water, the water's hot right away. That little energy miser turns colors when the water's hot. So pretty cool. I'm gonna open these up. Okay. And then I'm gonna step out and let Tony shoot in there. I'm gonna sneak up here and shut the engine off before we run this coach out of fuel. Go. And this bathroom is on a pocket door. So look at that. And that's a solid door. I mean, so many RVs, everything's hollow. You know, the, this is not hollow. This is a very solid door. It's heavy. You can feel it. Um, the other thing to look at here is this does have the emergency exit. There we go. I learned, learned to do it. Now there's a built-in ladder that comes out of here. There's again, there's a separate video on the emergency exit uh, that you can do. And of course this blind wouldn't be in our way, uh, but that's a lot better than climbing through a window, uh, which is your typical uh, emergency plan on an RV to have an actual exit door and a ladder that comes out. That's killer. So that, that's just, that's the type of thing that can save lives. Moving on into the bedroom. The new air comes with a queen size bed. There are three floor plans for the new air. All three have a queen size bed. I know I'm going to get the phone call. Can I get a king size bed? Let me save us all some time. No, Newmar is really big on keeping this coach small. That's one of the things. If you're going to be 33 feet instead of, you know, 37, 40, 43 feet long, if you're going to be small like this, it's going to be a queen size bed. All right. Take a look at some of the cabinetry in here. Some of our storage. 
Again, we have an AV cabinet up here with a built-in Blu-ray for the bedroom. Nice Sony television. And then six drawers. Three will be like this. Okay. And the bottom three will be like this. That saves me from having to open all of them. Above the bed, we also have storage. Now, there's uh, throughout the coach, you're going to notice a lot of outlets, and a lot of the outlets uh, have Tony get a shot of that one down there by the nightstand are just like that one that have both 210 volt receptacles on there, but it also has uh, the USB ports built in. We all have all our USB devices, so um, plug in, and there's one of those on both beds, so charge your phone, whatever. Um, cabinets these two are just like these two again carpeted nice doors all solid wood you see the accent lighting we have on throughout the coach that is controllable um, with just a press of a button on the uh, multiplex lighting switch instead of seeing a bunch of air conditioning ducts throughout they have this nice lattice work in here that that also makes it quieter than the air conditioners aren't sticking down into the unit because of the thicker roof and the better insulation that is a Numar the, the air conditioners are quiet whether it's on heat pump or air conditioning either one they're, they're just flat out quieter than the other brands out there don't believe me come check it out for yourself I love those I love those challenges we have a stackable Whirlpool washer and dryer okay Let's take a look back in the rear closet. There's some plastic that came on the chairs and such, but you can see the little shoe cubby mounted into the back wall. There is a safe back there as well. And of course, it's all hanging space all the way across. There's a very small here. Um, some coaches um, have a very large step up. I stepped up about three, four inches is all that I had to step up back here. That's just where the engine is. Not, not much we can do about that. A little bit of storage under the bed, and again, nice, it's on struts. This is a sleep number bed also. All right, so I think we've hit most of the features on the inside as far as furniture and layout goes. Let's spend a couple of minutes on the Silverleaf system. Now our Silverleaf system is our control system for the coach. It's all built right here into a touchscreen. If you can work a iPad or a, an, even an Android pad or anything like that, smartphone, you can work this coach. This is our home screen. Our home screen tells us most of the things we need to know. It tells us our level of fluids in any of the tanks, fresh, gray, and black, and it does it in percentages as opposed to being like one third, two thirds, or full. Um, this is obviously a lot more accurate and house and chassis battery uh, voltage, how much amperage we're using in this column here versus how much voltage is coming in on the two different legs. Um, two legs of electricity just means we're plugged into a 50 amp service, which we are. Then over here, this is kind of my menu over here. If I want to get more in depth on AC power, there it is. If I want to see my DC voltage right now, my battery is absorbed charging at 26 amps. Um, so that's a medium charge. It'll either do like 100 amps and really charge some dead batteries or 26, 27 amps if it's not, uh, if, if we're somewhere in the middle, like we're using a bunch of lights right now. So that's causing, uh, causing it to go into charge mode. Or if it's just maintaining, it'll do five to seven amps as well. Okay, generator. I can start and stop my generator. This has a, an auto generator start. The auto generator start can be uh, set up to come on when the coach reaches a certain temperature. Say I have my pets in here and I'm away from my coach. I can set it to, hey, if it gets to 75 degrees in here, uh, the generator can start automatically so the air conditioner can run. I can also have it set up to uh, come on if my batteries start to dip to a certain voltage. My water system, again, that brings me back to my tanks. I can turn my water pump off and on. I also have an autofill feature on here. So if I have been camping for, or camping, been RVing for uh, two weeks and I'm getting ready to hit the road tomorrow, I turn the autofill on and it slowly fills my fresh water tank. So when I get ready to leave, my fresh water tank's full. You don't have to go outside and throw a valve or anything like that. Climate control is just, like, just what it says. I control my heating and cooling system here, both the regular system and the Oasis system. Now, if you're not familiar with the Oasis system, that's a hydronic heating unit. This coach does not have a furnace or a water heater. The Oasis system does those things for us. The wonderful part about it is it's much quieter. It's much more efficient. You can uh, use as much hotter, hot water as you want. It is hot water on demand, but I did a completely separate video on the Oasis system as well. Again, if you're on our website, you can link straight to that and learn a lot more about Oasis, but I don't want to bore everybody to tears, so we're going to skip that for now. Okay. Um, my, oops, my floor heating is done in here also, um, so I can control how 
how hot I want the floors basically. Um, and then just you see all the different things for anything from your block heater to your water pump, uh, that type of thing. Even some basic diagnostics are done through this panel. So that is the Oasis system. It controls everything. That's the gateway to all good things in, in our coach. And it's right here in the hallway pretty intuitive system it really is if, if, if all you have to do is hit hit the department you want to go to and, and control it from there so that covers most of the things on the inside of our new air let's go take a look well first of all we're going to close it up i'll show you what it looks like with the slides closed and then we'll take a look at the outside okay so we close the slides this is what you have now again everybody wants you know they want all the features of the 43 foot motorhomes and all the space of the old non-slide motorhomes when the slides are in and they you, know, you have to make some choices here one of the things when you when you go to a smaller package and we still want multiple slides you know we we have a full wall slide and two other slides when those slides come in things do get a little tighter and there, there has to be some understanding of that but there this is absolutely adequate for for what we're trying to do you're traveling down the road, you need to get up, you're probably gonna to need to go do one of a couple of different things. You're either going to the refrigerator or the pantry to get a snack or, or a drink, or you're gonna go and use the restroom. So those are the things we need to be able to accomplish, more than enough room to do that. So here I am, I'm stepped out, you can see what aisle we have there. Okay, you definitely gotta kinda of turn sideways a little, but it's not like I'm doing cal calisthenics to get this done. So right past here, Tony's gonna to come with me. Now, pocket door makes this a breeze. Once we're here, I mean, you know, th this not even turning sideways or anything. And also, getting into the refrigerator. Very doable. Getting into the pantry, same thing. Whatever I need is there. I can even get to the bed and lay on the bed. Getting to the back closet, you're going to have to do some somersaults across the bed, that type of scenario. Um, if I wanted to cook something at the stove with the slide in, I certainly could. Microwave, sink. All of those things so it is accessible even with all the slides in a little snug but that's like I said we're 33 feet that's that's the beauty of this coach this is a, a little smaller package when it's opened up it's very very roomy when it's closed up it's passable and that's all we were looking for so there you go let's take a look at the outside compartments okay so let's take a look at the 2019 new air in the shadow graphics shadow uh, exterior paint scheme if you will now I have all the compartments open, so it looks like a looks like a new air exploded. We'll go ahead and start at the front. That's not normally where we start, but let's. Hey, we're doing things different. So up front, you're going to see we have our diesel generator all ready to go. Air horns that we were making so much noise with up here. Our hot water line to Gen is right here as well. Your hour meter for your for your generator and your circuit breaker are up front here. Now, um, this is a little air chuck. You can actually air up your toys or your tires by using the air system of the coach because there, is a, there are compressor tanks on here and there's a compressor. So when the engine's running, you're actually um, building air through the system. Beefier wiper blades than what you would normally see on motorhomes. Usually they're more of an automotive application. Newmar several years ago beefed these up to a, to a uh, just much stronger, more robust system. Of course, we have our Velvac chrome mirrors as we walk around the coach we see things like the the side cameras our flagpole holder so you can put your little flag whatever your flag is keyless entry here so you put you pick a five digit code that you want to um, lock and unlock the doors if I hold in on this okay all my doors locked now I'm going to do the secret master code Okay, that unlocks the doors. So just like that, you can lock and unlock all your compartment doors, um, even a doorbell. How could you live without that? Um, and you can lock and unlock your, uh, not, not just your entry door, but your compartment doors as well. This coach on the front end does have the 3M or the uh, Diamond Shield mask on it. You can kind of maybe see a little bit of that there. They put it around the, uh, it's all over the front end to protect against bugs and rocks and scratches, but they also put it around certain areas here, here where a ring might get it, or here where our keys in our hand might scratch it. Those type of areas, they've, they've uh, put that up for protection. We do have aluminum wheels on this coach, and these are a much bigger tire. These are 305 70s on the front here. Um, that is a, and of course they're 22 and a halfs. 
that's a much bigger, beefier tire than most of your like 36 and 38 foot uh, diesel pushers. This is a heavy duty coach. That's the, the it, it weighs, if you look at the weight of this coach versus the weight of other 36 and 38 foot coaches, this weighs more. This is a beefier diesel pusher. Like I said, this is made like the big 45 footers. It's just a, a, a smaller, smaller version of it. We have our Numar flush mount slides as well. We're not using a plastic piece here to hide the fact that our slides don't fit well. No, they actually recess them back into the wall. That's less chance of wind noise less chance of water penetration of course our fuel fill can be done on either side step back into our first storage compartment here we have our refrigerator or freezer it's just a setting uh, that you choose which you want it to do well we need to pull it out just a little bit more than that there is some wind blowing i apologize if there's wind noise in this talk to mother nature on that one that is our inverter converter uh, in here as well now we come over here, this is one of the things they did with this, that in, in my mind, probably the most impressive thing they did with the new air uh, was the amount of storage. The amount of storage on here is comparable to that of a 43, 45 foot coach. It is a ridiculous amount of storage and there were a lot of different methods they used to get that, but there's nothing that competes with this in the marketplace. I mean, look at that amount of pass through storage. They did put in the power trays on this one. We optioned that in. How slick is that? And these open like barn doors, so it's just you can fit a huge amount of stuff and even bigger stuff in there. Our outside television is on a swivel arm. This pulls out and can go whichever direction you want. And of course, the Bose sound bar goes with it. We'll move back to another really nice sized compartment here. We can see our tools for the central vacker in here and our extra tiles. Uh, extra tiles are shipped with every coach. Just in case you would ever drop a big pan and you crack one of your tiles, you have a spare tile um, from the original lot of, uh, uh, from the same box of tiles that the rest of them came from. So it'll match. That's a beautiful thing. Come back one more compartment. You have a nice lined compartment. All of these compartments are very well lit also. So the nice storage compartment here, and then we get back into a chassis compartment here. Here's those chassis batteries I mentioned earlier and the chassis disconnect. Now I wanna say, for those of you considering a new air, a couple of things. First of all, if you reach in your pocket right now, Tony's backing up towards the lake, this could get really funny. <laughs> if you reach in your pocket right now and you pull out your cell phone and it, it's a flip phone, Turn this video off. Don't buy a new air. There's a lot of electronics. You have to appreciate and like the touch screen, the smartphone. The, you have to like those electronics or you are way on the wrong coach. We'll, we'll set the, if you got a flip phone in your pocket, we'll set you up in a smaller Ventana LE or Ventana. We'll save you some money. You have to like the electronics. So uh, like I said, don't, don't be coming at me with a flip phone and telling me you don't understand the electronics on here. You were warned. The second thing with this is you really, when this coach is not in use, it really needs to be plugged in. There are so many computers and electronics on this coach, it needs to be plugged in. Yes, it has auto generator start. Yes, it has battery disconnects, but they're never, with the, with the computers that are on here, they're never fully disconnected and they'll pull your batteries down pretty quickly. So this really should be, when it's in storage, plugged in. All right, said my piece, moving on. Back here is the 360 horse Cummins engine that is mated to a, a six speed Allison transmission. Notice what you don't see back here is a radiator. When you get to this level coach, um, normally on a smaller coach, you're gonna see a rear radiator, which makes the engine harder to access. When you get to this price point of coach, you would normally see a side radiator, which will give you good engine access. This, they absolutely went with that, but there's no other coach out there that does this, that on the 360 platform actually has the side radiator, which is nice. 10,000 pounds flat towing behind this coach, so don't tell me it's underpowered. Um, 10,000 pounds you can flat tow with this. So you wanna tow your pickup truck behind it, you can absolutely do it. You can kind of see right above the, the hood that we have open here, there's your backup camera. It's a little lower mounted than, than what you would expect. That's because of the 360 degree camera system. There's one of those on the front, one of those on the back, and one on each side as we go around the coach. Side radiator, as I mentioned. Here's our fill for our DEF. If you're not familiar with DEF, give me a call. I'm not gonna get into after treatments right now, but that is something I can discuss with you at length. Um, just so you know, you use about a gallon of DEF for every 50 gallons of fuel that you use. Here's our storage for our sewer hose. 
sorry if we're having some funny reflections and everything i will apologize um it's a very bright sunny day uh, spring has sprung today so um it's it's nice we appreciate it but there is a nice breeze blowing out here and the sun is absolutely blinding yes you can make some comment it's reflecting off my head i get it haha -ha. moving on here is our wet bay. Now this looks like most of the Numar wet bays that you'll see out there, but there is one added thing, which is this big hose right here. And what that hose is, that's part of our SantaCon system. SantaCon, um, now uh, SantaCon basically, um, think of it as a garbage disposal for the black tank. Um, so it will grind it and move it on down the line. Most of the time when you're dumping tanks on an RV, it's just a gravity deal. Your tank sits about this height, the dump fort's down there, you pull the valve, gravity does its thing and yes it really does run downhill so um the, and you can still absolutely dump like that on here but you also have the option if you wanted to go a farther distance or even hook a garden hose up to the end of that black hose and go an even farther distance to get to to a dump it will grind it up into smaller matter and um shoot it now if you do use your hose for that, make sure it's not your fresh water hose. That's not good. So uh, this particular fresh water hose here is actually on a rewind, re rewind reel. So um, it's powered. You don't have to find a special place for your hose. Um, we have our SantaCon off and on button over here, all of our low point drains. We have a, a water tap out here, just like a water spigot on a house. But we do also have hot and cold water over here on this side. And then that little pink hose, that's how we get the RV antifreeze into our system. We can even turn our water pump on or check our fluid levels in our tanks right out here. That's handy when you're dumping it to see how close to being empty the tank is. That's, that's actually a very nice feature. So that's a quick walk through on the wet bay. We move forward into this compartment where you're going to see the power hose reel. That's a 50, uh, I'm sorry, 34 foot, 50 amp uh, cord. We can dump our shop, or our shop back, our central vac out here as well. But then you definitely see the Oasis system in here. And the Oasis system is the primary heater for our coach, although there's several ways to heat this coach. You can heat it with your heat pumps. You can heat it with your heated floor. You can heat it with the fireplace. You can heat it with the, um, with the Oasis system. Now, if if it really hits the fan and gets really really cold two things first of all you're doing this wrong drive this thing towards the equator and it's not as cold down there secondly this is going to be our primary heater if it really really gets cold so that's what this does it also like i said that's our hot water on demand there's a separate video as i mentioned earlier that covers just that we move forward a compartment we're going to see the other half of that pass through storage and then lastly we see our eight agm batteries on a pull out tray The final compartment up here is actually a chassis fuse, a chassis department. There's some chassis electronics in here from Freightliner, also some extra fuses from Numar, just in case you ever need them. <coughs> As we pan back away from the coach, I want to cover a little bit. Now up top there, it almost looks like we have awnings on this side. Those are not awnings on this side. They look the same. That's just done to make the coach uh, uh, look the same on both sides. Uh, so those are blanks, I'll, I'll call them. Those are not Girard awnings on this side. Below that, you see your Girard slide toppers at the top of the slide rooms. And then at the top of the windows, you actually have power window awnings. Those are also from Girard. Girard is the very top name in RV awnings. They are expensive, but they are wonderful. They're very robust and durable. There is a motion detector on the awnings that uh, keeps us um, from, from hopefully damaging uh, your awnings because you don't want to replace these. Um, but you never want to depend on the motion sensor. If it's windy, put your awning up. Like I'm not going to demonstrate the awning today. It is breezy, as I mentioned. We're not going to demonstrate the awning. Um, I'm sure there's other videos out there that show the awnings. I will tell you, they're on the other side. We'll go look at that real quickly. And they are the Nova awning. So instead of just coming straight out, they come out and then they kind of bend in the middle uh, and articulate down a little bit. And that's nice on those sunny days. If you're facing west and the sun is setting, that gives you more time out under there. So your awning on this coach, you have a little over the door awning. That's also a Girard. But then our, our main awning starts right here at about the door handle. There's actually two of them butted up against each other. And all of this area, all the way back to right here, will be under your awning. So the entire side of your coach is awning space. And this is where you spend your time when you're in the RV resort, when you're meeting your friends, it's cocktail hour, you're in your favorite chair out here, enjoying life, 
under your awning having a wonderful time of course there's led lights underneath there um, that will have that uh, uh, lit up nicely well into the night if cocktail hour goes more than an hour never happens at my house i promise anyway that's it folks we're going to wrap this up thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed the video. Call me with any questions. Don't forget to ask for me um, when you're getting serious about this. And I hope to see you down the road. My name is Chris Anderson. I'm with Mount Comfort RV. Have a great day. Do you see them rocking to that rhythm? Hear them clap their hands. What is this thing that makes them swing? It's the music of ragtime dance. When they hear him rag that piano, they want to shuffle all the while. They want to move their two feet to that two beat. Ragtime style.